I want to give you. I want to tell you what it does and what it doesn't do so you can decide if it's the right one for your hard-earned money or not. And if you appreciate that, hit that subscribe button and let's get started. Oh, also, quick little housekeeping note. This is their very first prototype of this model. Um, there's a couple little things that are going to be changing. Like, for instance, it doesn't have the magnet catch here on the store. That kind of stuff will be handled. I'm going to try to point out a couple of little different things that I know as we go through. But for the most part, you get the idea. Leave some feedback if you think they've missed something. Hopefully they've already corrected it, or maybe they just nailed it from the start. Let's find out. And I think some people kind of roll their eyes when manufacturers make floor plans that are similar to each other. I kind of like it because I like seeing how they each do it a little bit differently. And it's never just like, oh, that's a hard carbon copy. They always have their own little difference in spin on it. And the reason I like that is I'm a person who I don't like feeling shoehorned and strong-armed into only settling for certain things. For this kind of money, I don't want to settle for nothing. That sucks. Well, when you get multiple manufacturers competing against one another, first of all, that does tend to help price points because they, they if they have a monopolized floor plan, they can charge whatever they want for it, basically, within reason. Um, but uh, the other thing is it gives you selection. It gives you choice. It gives you options. You get to pick what you want instead of getting stuck with just what is. And I prefer that. Now, so what's separating this versus other things? Well, J-Feather is interesting in that they put power vent fans in every room. They put one big XL vent fan like this here in the biggest room of the RV. Then in the bathroom, um, they will also have a, a power vent fan, but a more smaller four inch fart fan variety. If this had a private bedroom, it would have a third power vent fan. Um, they're not hard to upgrade by any means. And you can see uh, you've got either population control or cuddle compliance with that fold up down armrest. And there's actually a portable picnic table stowed away under that sofa that we'll get to see later with easy reach household outlets on both sides. Now, you'll, I don't know how easy it will um, be to discern this uh, when we get to the like Murphy bed footage in a few minutes here. But uh, when you get a Murphy bed like this, Yes, it's a north-south bed. I don't know that I'm going to call it a walk-around bed, though, because I don't know that you do really walk around it because those side stands where those wardrobe towers are, they eat up a lot of space. Now, uh, all your windows in here, um, they all have the nice blackout... Oh, phew, the, the pole knob or whatever was right there. I overlooked it. But uh, you really want to blot the sun out, you can. Also, they're all tinted windows, which is kind of cool. And Jay Feather's always really good about putting outlets where they're fairly easy to reach around their, their seating spaces. And light switches. You see three black things over there. One's set of household plugs, one's USBs, and one's the light switch for the lights just in the slide. But speaking of that, they, uh, <laughs> they spend serious money on lighting in these things. They, it really brightens up in here. It's also very seamless in how it looks with the flooring because I love how they make the main floor and the slide floor match. But they've also got a new way of doing it where it doesn't have this like hard colored trim all the way around it. And I kind of like that. To me, it just gives it a better, smoother look uh, overall. Over here on the wall, you've got your uh, thermostat as well as your charge controller, which previously was optional, now standard. Also standard now, a larger refrigerator that was not even optional before. So that is something that I think is very cool. This is also something I think is very interesting. Um, like Rockwood has a very similar floor plan called a 2509. It's super, super popular. Um, and they didn't put storage here. They just put a TV up there. The TV is on a swing arm and can pivot. This is also on a swing arm and can pivot, but they did it in a way that doesn't lose storage. So you have a couple ways of doing this. The TV itself is on a pivoting swing arm. So this one can actually just fully flat face the front bed, not on any sort of angle. Actually, it could probably all but face outdoors if you wanted it to. Um, the uh, interesting thing here, though, is that you also maintain some storage behind it. And this is an execution I've not seen done before. Uh, of course, I got to actually get the latch on there. There we go. See, uh, I'm not left-handed. My left hand is the hand that can't. And my right hand is the one that's like, I got you, fam. I'll, I'll take care of that. If I ever lost my right hand, I might as well just, um, I'll, I'll be done. That'd be it. Uh, I'll probably starve. I don't even know if I can feed myself with my left hand. <laughs> Pardon my uh, vest over here. It's warm in this sucker today. 
Um, I really appreciate Jake because it's like 30 degrees outside. They pulled this in the shop for me. That was awful nice of them. I appreciate that. Now, your L-shaped peninsula counter gives you some functional kitchen prep space that otherwise this floor plan would, would have com virtually none. The downside to this, I haven't closed the slide for road mode yet. What I'm estimating, though, is that when that slide closes up, I'm thinking that's going to be awful tight. And the reason I think that is if you notice, they actually added a cutaway at the bottom of that cabinet right there. Uh, so that the slide flap could go under it without getting all bunched up and uglied up. But this is also a really good opportunity to see how the, they, they don't put floor vents in these, which I, I think is nice. Now, looking over here in the bunks, there is one prototype change I know for a fact is going to happen. They tried to put a cabinet door here, but it like it doesn't it doesn't fit. It's it's too big. Um, and there's some really good storage down in there. So what they're gonna do is they're going to put this kind of stretchy mesh stuff over that so you can keep the storage um, and not have to deal with a door that like doesn't work for you. By the way, these bunks are double bunks. They're each 600 pound rated. Jayco always rates their bunks 300 pounds per sleeping space, which is cool. Um, they're very consistent. Not every manufacturer is. Upper and lower bunks also both have the double sets of power plugs and the little mesh phone pocket uh, right there. Something else I think is very, very cool on these is the fact that they give us separate curtains for the upper and lower bunks and that easy setup ladder. It's there when you need it, gone when you don't. <sighs> to me, that just makes a lot of sense. I will tell you though, like most RV bunkhouse ladders, it is not very barefoot friendly. So kind of keep that in mind. I, I don't know how you fix that problem, but that is that is what it is. And it doesn't have to be pretty for me to tell you. I just want you to know what you're getting into. Now, for the Murphy bed, I do have to take into the world wide angle lens mode, like, you know, fisheye lenses. I hate doing that, but it's the only way I can get this all in frame so you can see how everything works, like that portable table. Um, and this is, it's it's a super easy setup Murphy bed. It just flops up and down. It does also have a gas strut though, which is nice. So it flops up and down easily, but you can see the top of the mattress when it's closed and uh, you, uh, it is a short queen. It's a bendy short queen. And that makes replacement mattresses and bedding a little trickier. Um, the, again, it's just one of those things. I appreciate that they included that privacy curtain there, though. That was a nice little touch they put into these. Um, as we work our way around, getting over to the dinette area, again, they, they changed up their whole dinette setup this year. Uh, and it's it's free-floating, which is cool. It's, it's also surprisingly heavy. And at first, that was a little off-putting to me. But then I got thinking about it. And when you're actually using a dinette, especially in a bunkhouse with kids, it's going to get bumped. And if it's a little bit heavier weight, it's not going to get knocked over nearly as easily. It's not going to spill stuff off it as easily. I don't know that I'm unhappy with the weight of that. Um, I don't know. It's going to... I'd be kind of curious to see what people think once they start getting out there. Because I've never seen another manufacturer kind of use that setup before. Um, I don't know if you're an owner of one of these and you're watching this video or a different J feather at that system, leave us some notes. Let us know. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Is it a nailed it? Is it a failed it? Did they poop the coop? I don't know. It's my, I've really been enjoying that phrase lately. Sorry. Uh, bathroom. It actually does have a locking door, which is nice if you just need a moment of sanity and privacy. Um, solid space around the toilet. Not the world's biggest bathroom, but effective, you know. I always, there's something always so nice and classy when a manufacturer puts a window in the bathroom. I don't think I would ever have that shade open. No way. I don't even like seeing myself in the mirror when I get out of the shower. I certainly don't want somebody else having to see me. I don't know if I could afford their therapy after that. Yuck, but you get the idea. The RV's six and a half foot tall, by the way. So when you're a little over six foot like me and you step up into that shower pan, your head's in the bubble. But uh, I don't know. I'm only there a couple minutes. I'd prefer a taller ceiling, so I didn't have to deal with that. But it's also not, I don't know. To me, it's not the end of the world. But everyone's different, you know? That's my two cents. That doesn't mean you should think that way. Just that's how I look at it. Again, what I'm curious about here is what do we have in road mode I'm eyeballing it. I don't think we're going to be able to use the bed in transit. Let's find out. But that's why I never try to assume, and I always try to double check, because it is a short queen. But the fact is, you can use that bed in transit. But my earlier suspicion about the way the slide and the peninsula countertop interact, that was confirmed. 
Uh, you might notice I have that table leaned out of the way because that's the only way you're really going to be able to, unless you do the butt scoop boogie and you do the Dukes of Hazard yeehaw and you uh, slide your butt over the uh, counter, that's the only way you're going to get back there. Well, I guess now a second unless, unless you use the rear cargo door as a potential emergency bathroom entry, which I suppose I could, you know, if my kid was about to crap her pants, I would definitely help her get in the camper before that happened. Nobody wants to have that happen. On That's not the, that's, that's like core memory unlocked from that movie Inside Out. But the thing is too, you've got a straight shot. If you fold that bunk up, you've got a straight shot right there where you can actually potentially load some long cargo. And that's one of the interesting things about this floor plan. That cargo bunk function right there, I think is one of the main reasons. This floor plan is almost as popular with uh, solo and couples campers as it is with families, because that can allow for things like you can have bikes inside. Some people have bikes that cost $5,000. I wouldn't want to put that on a bumper. Forget that. Um, they, uh, some people have, you know, small kayaks or something like that. Like, there's interesting different things you can do with this in a more cargo fashion. And in case someone's curious, the bunks aren't structural. If you wanted to take those bunks out and build a little office desk space or something, you absolutely, absolutely could. Although, you could also just look at something like an ember that is designed to have the bunks removed and has office space set up for you either way. But they run more money. So, it all just depends on what you feel like doing. Now, as I mentioned, this is a prototype. You can see they were kind enough to allow me in here in their factory after hours to record this. And this is, uh, at the time I'm recording this, so early in the prototypey phase, I don't actually have weights and measures available to me. Hopefully, I've been able to uh, acquire those and get them on screen before this footage goes out. Um, but estimating here, I think this will probably be a solid fit for uh, generalized half-ton towing. You know, you got a tow package, especially late model tow package, half-ton. Uh, based on what I know from similar RVs, I think you're going to be uh, okay here. This actually kind of surprised me, not necessarily so much in a positive way, just because they had to have some place to put stuff like the water heater. It does not have a full pass-through compartment the way that most of your J-Feather Murphy bed models would. Um, you did see down there, uh, the griddle that is included with this RV, since it does have some variety of, I don't know if we fully call it a camp kitchen, but because it has a, a, I don't know, a thing, a cooking station by default outside, it does come with the griddle by default on this model. I've also noticed like some people are going, some G feathers have nose caps and some don't, or is there a shortage problem? No, though, like the shortage problem was definitely an issue, major issue in the pandemic, uh, pandemic. Wow. That's funny. I didn't even mean that, but that is funny. Oh, God, I'm kicking stuff. <laughs> Scared the crap out of me. <laughs> kind of like, um. so all the lights that you see in this factory, they're all motion activated. They just click on when you walk under them, and that's fine. What's really creepy is when all the lights are off down there, and then the lights start coming on, moving your direction. That's that's a creepy experience. That's when you start going, if you came here to kill me, clap your hands. Um, but never mind that. What was I getting at? Oh, it doesn't have a full pass-through. Up front here, you do have your tankless on-demand water heater. Um, they had an extra little bucket of space. A why not space. They didn't waste it. That's where your battery disconnect is located. What else would you put in there? I'm kind of curious. It, it would probably help if I, I started actually looking at the camera and not just looking at the thing so you could also see it as I'm asking you a question. In case you are curious, that is also where your inverter prep wiring um, is located. Now, they uh, do a different kind of stabilizer jack here called a quick drop stabilizer. And you see that extra arm that drops down? That is the, the secret in the sauce of that critter. It provides significantly better stability versus conventional scissor jacks. But that's one of those things. There's dollar cheaper versions of this floor plan out there, certainly. Um, it's those kind of details that if you've never owned an RV, you don't know to look for. The, you don't know what you don't know. And I'm trying to help you cut that learning curve a little bit. Those things are handy. Is it a deal breaker, deal maker for me? Eh, no. It's nice. It's like, it's like heated steering on a vehicle. I don't have to have it. It's nice. You know what I mean? It's kind of one of those things. Um, they are using a different chassis on uh, your, your Jayco uh, smaller trailers. It's made by Norco, not made by Lippert. Um, 
it's a, a little different style of construction where it's not actually an I-beam. It's like a Z-frame chassis. Uh, it's made with higher strength, lower alloy steel, uh, which allows them to actually save a little bit of weight. And they are always good on these J-feathers about giving us just maximized awning space. So many manufacturers, like I could see a lot of brands um, cutting the rear awning off like right here, you know, and it would be okay. It wouldn't be bad, but this is what you want, right? I mean, you want it to, to very clearly cover the entry door, and they even encompassed a little bit of that, I don't know, camp kitchenette, whatever we want to call it kind of thing. The speakers, if they were any higher, would be mounted on the frickin' roof. Uh, that would be, that actually wouldn't be terrible in case your nephew happens to be an astronaut for NASA while he's, uh, you know, in the International Space Station, or she, I suppose, um, you, uh, you, you could play them some crunchy tunes. By the way, did you know one time somehow a NASA astronaut snuck a full-size like gorilla outfit onto the International Space Station? Um, there's actual camera footage of him slipping this suit on and then running around, well, f I don't know, flying around inside the space station, scaring the absolute crap out of all the other astronauts that were in there. They thought I saw a gorilla got on the spaceship somehow. That's funny. I think, see, that's my kind of humor. That's, that's amazing. Now, remember the griddle is included, but what do you think about this setup right here? It doesn't have a sink. It does have what is effectively a hot, cold outside utility shower. There's also a couple power outlets back there. And then there's a little magnet hold back for this little utility drawer. Now, obviously, if you have something plugged in and you flip that thing up, you're going to flat smash uh, the uh, the outlets. It's funny because there there are outlets over here. It seems like that's where they should have put the outlets instead of uh, behind that flip up door. But pff, what do I know, right? I'm pff, I'm not a math whatever. <laughs> By the way, Goodyear uh, endurance radials down there. So those are 87 mile an hour rated. Not that you should ever be towing that fast, but that's the point. Um, there's a lot of RVs out there with like 60, 65 mile an hour tires. Um, if you do want to go highway speeds, this is something that you could do. I will say, I personally just, I don't like towing more than 60, 65 at best. And if it's windy, I'm going to go slower. And if somebody can't recognize that I've got something shaped like a brick behind me, they can go around. You know, I, I don't care. Let them honk their horns. Um, there's a, oh, beautiful. The gas comes out the backside. That is a propanus. That is a propanus, uh, proper all day, every day right there. Although, with this bar in the way, I know I could still hook something up there, but it looks like it's a little cumbersome, but it's also probably not going to stop me from using it. The ladder is 250 pound rated to get you up to that plywood deck magnum truss roof. Uh, up top also, you know what? Why am I talking about it? Let's go look at it. Because that's the whole point of watching a video, right? To actually see stuff. So uh, plywood decking under this polar white roof membrane. And notice how the, the, the top part of the AC shroud is also white. That just helps the AC unit run a little more effectively. But Something last year that was optional, that's now standard, is that solar panel. In case you're wondering how much, that is 200 watts of magic right there. Because it, somehow it turns radiation from the sun into lightning that uh, somehow we've learned how to harness. Magic is real. So anyway, yeah. 30, uh, 30 amp charge controller uh, included with that, by the way. And I'm kicking more stuff. Scared the crap out of myself again. Um, cargo door. Now, as we saw previously, these bunks can, you know, oh, God, it's heavy. Move bunk. Get out the way. Um, and in case you're curious, this door does deadbolt. But here's kind of a, a, I don't, is this a good thing or not a good thing? If you look, the, the deadbolt latch actually is under the mattress level. So if you do have that locked up, you don't have to worry about the kids like trying to take uh, the, the the sneak attack uh, door outside of the RV and running around at night. Um, that's actually <laughs> that's a problem that my parents kind of had with my older brother. He was apparently popular with young ladies when he was a younger man, and he would get out of the camper somehow at night and go running around the campsite, and then somehow at like two three in the morning. My brother would show back up and make a bunch of noise because the thing is he was sneaky getting out but god he was clumsy and loud getting back in and if you're wondering why am i talking about this uh, because it will be on the test so take notes anyway magnet hold backs for all these doors and they're using a key like system so it's one key to rule them all lord of the ring style now that is bonus storage behind the refrigerator and it actually goes vertically all the way up inside there 
It's like if you've got a, uh, a golf club to help deter the gas station murder hobos, you got a perfect little storage spot for it. Also very handy for storing Conan the Barbarian's great sword, in case you were curious. Um, over here, we also have storage behind the dinette. So instead of having to rip the whole dinette apart, the storage is just easier to access and comes to you. And I don't really think I'm doing my job covering any Jayco without talking about their warranty. Their 2 plus 3 year warranty provides more coverage time than pretty much anybody else in the industry. They have one of the longest and most comprehensive coverages out there. Um, and there's a lot of confusion about that because there's some manufacturers, people say, well, their camper has a three year warranty. No, it doesn't. It has probably a one year warranty and a three year structural. This has a two year warranty and a three year structural. So it's doing everything else uh, that anyone else is doing and then some. Let me know what you think about her. Now, as I said before, it is similar to some other things out there like the 2509 Rockwood, the 240 Surveyor, and a few other guys. I will leave you some links in the video description to check pricing and availability on this model as well as to see video tours of those others. Take a look at those. Let me know which one you would go with and why. And they all do a couple things that the others don't. That's, that's why it's kind of tricky sometimes. But until next time, thanks again for tuning in. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Mm -hmm.